Welcome to Free Media, I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, a second would-be assassin attempted to take out former President Donald Trump. 58-year-old Ryan Wesley Ruth reportedly hid in the bushes at Trump's golf course in West Palm Beach for 12 hours before drawing Secret Service attention. Both sides have been quick to blame heated political rhetoric for inspiring real-world violence, but some anti-Trump voices are effectively accusing Trump of bringing this on himself. How does that work? Former Republican Representative Adam Kinzinger, who's now a CNN pundit and never Trump commentator, wrote on X, look, violent rhetoric is wrong and has no place, but MAGA pretending they didn't like this fire is gaslighting to the hundredth power. Since Trump showed up, our politics has gone to crap. And the Cincinnati Inquirer wrote, there's no place in politics for violence. That said, the former president, Donald Trump, brings a lot of this stuff on himself. And then there was Rachel Vindman, wife of Trump impeachment witness Alexander Vindman, who wrote on X, no ears were harmed, carry on with your Sunday afternoon, referencing the previous uh, assassination attempt. She subsequently deleted that statement after facing pressure to do so. So a lot of unhinged reactions uh, this time around from people in the media and so on and so forth, I thought. Agreed. And Rachel Vindman, for what it's worth, it took her a long time to delete that tweet, and she initially doubled down on it, posting several additional tweets afterwards saying that she wasn't going to cater to the people who were quote unquote triggered in her replies. But this is just victim blaming. Uh, as Adam Kinzinger put it, to the 100th degree. I mean, to sit there and say that he brought this on himself because of his rhetoric requires some real mental gymnastics where they clearly have no sympathy, no compassion, no concern about the fact that two people have now attempted to kill this guy in just a span of a couple of months. Yeah, it, it doesn't make a lot of uh, consistency to be saying that you know Trump is uniquely, in terms of his rhetoric, uh, violent and inspiring violence, but the one getting the assassination attempts is him, which is not what they're saying. They're not saying that his rhetoric is so out there that it's causing people to think that we have no choice but to take matters in our own hands to stop him. They're saying that the right is responsible for some purported rise in political violence, which isn't even true. The violence in our society is mostly not political. It's mostly for a variety of other reasons, crime, mental illness, whatever else. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. I always think it's a bad idea to blame whatever heated rhetoric for what's going on. Look, uh, and, and that's true of both sides. I don't really agree with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have both very much adopted the, this is Democrats' fault for all the things they're saying about Trump and, you know, with his shoes on the other foot, Democrats say it. And it's to me, it's just like, look, it, crazy people are like their actions are their fault, not the f and, and our rhetoric has been heated for forever. If you go back to the 19th century, the founding of the country, like old political cartoons, we have always we have argued viciously over politics. People have said nasty things to each other. Off, like metaphors and figurative language is not the same as threats of violence and is not causing actual violence in the vast majority of cases, in my view. Right, people have literally beat each other on the floor of the Senate Absolutely. in our nation's history, the infamous caning of Charles Sumner. Um, people went after Trump for saying, telling his supporters to fight during his January 6th speech on the White House ellipse, which is just standard political rhetoric. There's right. nothing inherently violent about that. And I'm always skeptical of that argument too, because I mean, even before Trump came onto the scene, conservative commentators were constantly accused of inciting violence. Like Ben Shapiro has been one of the people who has been most accused of using charged rhetoric that has allegedly inspired right-wing crazies. And this argument didn't come up from the left back when James Hoskinson went to that baseball field in Alexandria and nearly killed Steve Scalise and shot at a bunch of Republicans. He right. had a hit list of Republicans. It's only now that they can conveniently use it against Trump himself because he was the target of these assassination attempts. I mean, I do think comparing someone to Hitler is a, is a pretty bad idea considering we literally make moral quandaries out of the idea of people going back in time to kill baby Hitler. Mm -hmm. um, that is maybe a step above what they've accused the right of doing in terms of rhetoric, but at the same time, 
you have to acknowledge, as you said, crazy people will be inspired by the most insane things, whether it's someone reading Catcher in the Rye and deciding they need to try right. to kill somebody or- Obsessed with Jodie Foster. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I need to shoot President Reagan because Jodie Foster will fall in love with me. Um, that's always a very dangerous and slippery slope argument that people make. Um, and yeah, they've you, gone to insane lengths at this point to try to shirk responsibility from anyone except for Trump for the things that happened to Trump. And in, in this case, you can actually say Ryan Wesley Ruth, the suspect, does have a discernible political ideology. Like the first Trump shooter, it seems like he's just a crazy person. Um, he he looked for other whatever targets. I, I don't actually, we don't know, but it doesn't seem to have super discernible political motives. This guy has a history of like Ukrainian and Taiwanese advocacy and was quoted or was talked to by the New York Times and by Semaphore trying to get uh, Afghani US trained soldiers to be like mercenaries in Ukraine, wrote a book about it. Um, I, I think they're, you know, without being conspiratorial about it at all, um, I think there probably are questions that need to be asked or investigations that need to take place to figure out how, uh, if at all, he was on the radar of U.S. national security um, people in those terms. I'm, again, not saying, to be clear, that he was inspired by or directed or that's any kind of deeper involvement, but he uh, he was someone who, I mean, he went to Ukraine. How did he get to Ukraine? Where, you know, where does all this um, come from? And uh, like Edward Snowden had a tweet to that effect. I don't know if you saw. Um, today being like, okay, this guy probably maybe has had contacts in the State Department. So what do these people know about him? Exactly. And I did see a report that suggested he had been on the FBI's radar back in 2019. And then in these articles, uh, there was one article that ran, I want to say it was the New York Times. I actually remembered reading it when it came out. I believe it was in the Sunday edition. And it was about these sort of uh, extra national security state efforts to support the war in Ukraine right. by people like Malcolm Nance, who is an ex uh, State Department employee, who is now an MSNBC commentator. Um, he was involved with this Ukrainian legion that Ryan Ruth was also involved in. They didn't quite say that those two had been working together, but they were both helping the same kind of unit and recruiting for the same unit. And then Ryan Ruth wrote in this book, very oddly, that he would give uh, Iran permission to assassinate Trump if they wanted to. And himself, and, for voting for Trump in 2016. Exactly, and then fast forward, and the Trump campaign has not only been hacked by Iran, but there was apparently a foiled assassination attempt by Iranian officials earlier in the year prior to the first assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania. So there's a lot of weird threads that need to be tugged on. Well, this on. guy also had a weapons uh, conviction right. in, I think, like 2002, or a weapon of mass destruction conviction. I don't know what that was I believe he. I believe he illegally had a automatic yeah. weapon or something to that effect. So someone with a, you know, a criminal background and then was also involved in this recruitment effort for the Ukrainian um, mercenary forces. It's all, it's, it raises questions. <laughs> not, not putting on any tinfoil hat to say I have some questions about it. Yeah, and other questions I have are related to how he got the current firearm that he was yeah. going to use in this attempted assa assassination because this guy was from Hawaii, but I think they said the AK-47 that he had was a, had a Florida serial number that was kind of shaved off of the gun. So how did he get that weapon? I mean, there's a lot of various yeah. avenues that need to be investigated related to this attempt. Last thing I wanna say on this subject is, you probably saw that there was a press conference from like the local sheriff um, congratulating the Secret Service on the fine job they did. And look, they, they fired on the suspect as soon as they noticed him in the bushes. Better than last time. They apprehended him. I think it's fair to say it went better than last time. But the sheriff did say something about how, well, since he's only the former president, not the sitting president, we didn't have as much security there as we would have otherwise. And I'm like, I don't know that that's going to be reassuring to a lot of people. Like, he needs whatever level of security is appropriate to the situation, appropriate to the fact that people are trying to kill him and you know maybe this was a more logistically difficult one the guy was you know, hiding in the bushes it's a golf course it's not as um, open in areas where the first time where the guy was on a roof they really should have had been had under control but um, yeah I, I don't know I was not 
I was just not so quick to go, oh, great job, people. Nothing went wrong here. Exactly. You know? Well, sure, because they said that they didn't sweep the perimeter before Trump went out to play golf. The guy was, according to cell phone uh, towers, pinging in the area for 12, for 12 hours, hours before Trump was going to the And if it was Biden, course. they would have they would have surveyed the course differently. It was kind of what they said, which is like, well, you should probably do it that way for Trump too. I don't right. know. Especially since he's already been a yeah. victim. Uh, he's already been shot once. And Biden actually, in his initial reaction to this, he was asked he was either boarding or deep, deep planing from Marine One. And he said, I think that Secret Service needs more personnel to protect the former president. And then, of course, a few hours later, when he gave his official remarks, he said, great job, Secret Service. I'm the the last person on earth to recommend, like, that we need more funding for any government agency or that we need to hire more government employees. In fact, I'm unwilling to say it, but maybe (laughs) things could be redirected um, elsewhere. Maybe we can minimize the budget of uh, fewer fewer IRS agents doing audits of low income or Uber drivers or something like that. Uh, 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 Prioritize um, keeping our our high risk asset political figures um, safe from being killed. Yeah, I think maybe. That, that's a pretty good idea. I think the 70,000 IRS agents could probably, the funding for those could be better used somewhere else. We'll be back with more free media after this.